Alrighty, I didn't want to have to be the one to make this video, but here we are. If you've been following the channel for a little bit, you've noticed that I've been struggling with an action cam and the audio. It's been ongoing. I think I know the solution to it, but I don't want to do it. Now, everyone said the solution is just get a GoPro with a media mod and then it will work. Yep, that's fine. GoPro have a whole bunch of other issues which affect me more than just audio. So what we're gonna to do today is we're gonna go through my issues specifically, hoping that there's people out there that have these issues as well. I'll probably have this video in two different parts, the breakdown of what's going on and then some testing in the next video to try and work out a solution for what this audio problem is. Now, I'm pretty sure 90% of the problem is this. This helmet here just lets way too much air in. It is the noisiest helmet for like air pollution noise that I've ever had. A lot of people have said the same. Now, you also find a lot of people that don't really care or don't mention that, but you look at their channels and they're either sponsored by someone like this or they don't run audio, so it's not, not an issue for them. So what we'll look at is some cameras that I've had on this helmet um, and another camera that's 10 plus years old that these new manufacturers being GoPro, DJI and Insta360 probably should look at and take some of those features from a camera that's 10 plus years old and put it on these cameras here. They sort of have, but it's an option and you gotta pay more money to get it. Whereas a camera that was 10, was 10 plus years old had that on it from day one. Okay, so if you don't know what this helmet is, it's pretty familiar to a lot of people, especially in the adventure bike scene. This is an Arai XD4. Um, it's called something else in another country. What a lot of people don't show you is their mic setups on here. What I've done with my mic setup in this, I've tried everything except one thing, which is what I'm gonna try in this instance, just to try and keep a base level on all the testing, um, rather than have something that's yeah, not working. What I've tried is I've tried the microphone in this right hand cheek pad, behind it, inside the groove, underneath it, with extra padding, with dead cats on the microphone, and it just doesn't wanna work. It just picks up a lot of wind noise through the helmet. When I put the microphone at the front, it was just a lot of popping and carrying on, but I had it up a little higher. I had it sort of on this air vent on the inside, but the air vent's been closed off. What I'm gonna try and do is if you have a look underneath the helmet, there's a little chin vent here that sort of slides down. On the inside, underneath, I'm gonna mount it, which when I mount it, I'll bring the camera in and show you all that sort of thing. Okay, so we'll first of all start with the current setup that I have on this helmet, which is this one here, which is the DJI Action 3. Now there is currently the Action 4 out, but we'll go into that in a little bit. Now I've got a small rig case on this. This is a metal case. You can pop it down, get to the battery compartment, change batteries in and out, nice and easy, especially when it's mounted on the helmet. On the left-hand side, the door comes off, USB access to where you put your adapter for the mic and then I ran it round into the helmet and had it, the microphone sitting on the right hand side. Let's talk about the adapters for this here. Let's get them out. The most common um, adapter, so we're talking USB-C to three and a half mil. So this is the Boya BYK4. You'll see a lot of YouTube videos, everyone recommends this adapter for this camera. It was one of the first ones that people found that worked and everyone sort of just stuck with it. The issue with this, in this camera here, once you plug an external microphone into it, you have gain control. Gain's pretty much an amplifier for the audio coming into the camera. So you can either have negative gain or positive gain. I've never gone to positive gain because I oh, don't need it for this. So negative gain, this camera goes down to negative 12. The issue with this adapter is for whatever reason it runs hot, which means as soon as I plug this into the camera, the camera might as well be set at plus six. Even at 
minus 12 gain on the camera, it's realistically only about minus six, maybe less, even closer to zero, which creates a whole bunch of other issues, loudness, bringing in noise, especially wind noise, it just picks up crazy on that. Now the microphone I've been using with that is a Rode Lavalier Go. So this is a TRS microphone. Okay, so if you don't know what a TRS microphone is, it's just a type of connection. So you've got tip, ring, and sleeve. You've also got a TRRS, which is tip, ring, ring, sleeve, which I have another one of those microphones in a minute, and we'll go into that in a second. So this microphone here obviously plugs in and plugs into the camera. Okay, so on the back there, it'll give you now access to all the different settings for the microphone. So minus 12 gain is the most you can go with this camera. So you can have plus 20, minus 12. So what I've done is I've found that that was way too hot um, as a connection, picks up a lot of wind noise. If we're talking now, without any wind noise, we're not on a bike, we're not moving, any of these connections is perfectly fine. And this is the part that um, the action camera companies don't understand. You can send them a sample of whatever, which I have done to DJI and Insta360. They're like, oh, it's fine. I'm like, but have a look at the videos of when I've been riding. They're like, yeah, it's lots of wind noise. It's just wind noise, try and protect it. It's probably your helmet. That's the response that I've got. Um, there are people out there that have these helmets with GoPros. Yeah, it works fine. But I just, I don't know if it's the wind coming off this bike particularly. Uh, it just creates this whole bunch of other wind underneath your chin. And I've noticed even if I'm standing up in the wind by itself, so it's just the helmet, same issue, it doesn't fix it. So I do have a couple of other things coming. So instead of these little wind socks that are on the end of these microphones, I've got some specialist ones coming. I was hoping they're gonna be here by now for this exact purpose. They're designed for lots of wind. So I'm gonna test all these cameras with the standard microphone covering and the other one that I have coming in the next video. At the moment, we're just gonna talk about connections. So, and then I'll find out which is the best microphone to use and the best connector to use for this camera. Okay, so the next one I tried from the Boya one was the standard USB-C three and a half mil connection that comes with like your Google Pixel phone, your iPhones, your iPads, that sort of thing. It does work a little bit better than the Boya one, but you cannot use a TRS microphone with it. As soon as you plug in the TRS microphone, it doesn't work. You have to plug in a TRRS microphone. So if you're looking at the differences with these Rode microphones, you can't tell. They both look exactly the same until you look at the connection. So the gray one is a TRRS and the black one's the TRS. So I'll see if I can zoom in. Gray one pretty much has three black bands. The black one has two black bands. So Tip, ring, ring, sleeve, tip, ring, sleeve. That's pretty much all you need to know. And as soon as you plug it in, it works. A few things to notice. If I'm talking like this on the microphone, on the back here, it's not peaking or anything like that. With the boyer, even in here, it starts to peak. So I thought, great, this one might work. And this could work once we test out with the other adapter. This might be the go-to. So this is what we're gonna look at in the next video. Okay, so when I put this in my helmet, still a lot of wind noise, wasn't happy with it. I thought surely there's gotta be something else. So I looked for another adapter and I found it. This adapter here is the A-Logic adapter. And the reason why I got it is because in the end here where the USB-C connection is, there's apparently a chipset to help filter noise. And it does work, it works really, really well in that it filters absolutely everything and compresses it all into one noise. When we do a test video, you'll see that as soon as I hit start on the camera, it starts recording, I'm like, yes, this audio should work. And then it just completely compresses everything and it's just all noise. Very frustrating, but as to talk like this now, absolutely fine. You wouldn't even know it. And you can run this one a little cooler as well. So I had this one sitting at zero or minus six in this camera. 
minus 12 was just way too quiet. But once again, that could work really well with the other attachment that I have coming. So once I mount this in my helmet this time, I'm gonna have it a lot closer to my mouth rather than off to the side. So I'm thinking it might be picking up too much wind noise here, but if I have it around in the front, pretty much like a pilot. In the last week or two, DJI have released an adapter. So this is an Insta360 one, but they've released a factory adapter for the Action 4. It does clip in and it does work on the Action 3, but they're not recommending to use it on the Action 3. Um, so I messaged them and asked why. And it pretty much come down to, they haven't tested it. The firmware on the Action 3 pretty much doesn't support it, even though it works. They're not gonna blatantly come out and say, yeah, yeah, it definitely works for the Action 3. So I asked what the differences were in the audio chipsets and that for, between the Action 3 and the Action 4, they won't tell me. You cannot get that information out of them. Which is the bit that I'm sort of struggling with. There's a ton of people out there that got all these Action 4s for free, moto vloggers, and they haven't tested out the adapter. Just test out the adapter, that's all I'm asking. Just to let people know how it works or doesn't it work, is that why they don't want people testing it? Yeah, so we'll get to this one in a minute, but yeah, that's where I am at the moment with this. So let's talk about this camera here. This was pretty much my first decent action cam that I got. This is the GoPro Hero 7 Black. So this is in an aftermarket case at the moment because it was just my secondary camera. If you wanna know why it's in an aftermarket case, watch this video here of it hitting the ground on the highway at 110 k's an hour. It still survived, um, but it's a bit worse for wear. Had to get new lens, that sort of thing. The bottom of it's missing a couple of little panels, but it does still work, sort of, in that it's worked as good as it ever did but this camera here is pretty much my hatred for GoPro. It's just too unreliable. It um, overheats. I film everything 4K. A lot of people online will run 1080, not a problem with the GoPro. You plug in your audio attachment and you're good to go. So with this camera here, I've had nothing but overheating problems. And it seems to be a trend that's carried on throughout all the future releases of this camera. So people with um, Hero 12s are still experiencing overheating problems. That is something that I've never ever had on the Action 3. It's never overheated, it's worked every single time, but the audio is just not, not there. Start to warm up in the shed. So the new Hero 12 could be the answer to what I'm gonna get. The problem I have with it is the media mod. You have to take the battery cover off to slide it in and then once you screw on the mount for your helmet, you can't just quickly get it in and out to change the battery. So if I was gonna run the new GoPro, I'd still run this connection um, with TRS microphone. So when it comes time, we're gonna put this on here and we're gonna see if we can get decent audio out of that one as well. I'm not sure if it's gonna work because as I said, had nothing but overheating issues. Any more than 10 minutes, this thing will overheat and then all the files become corrupt and it's unusable. I'd rather a camera that has really good video, especially if I'm out on a trip, it will capture really good video and then worst case scenario, like what I had to do in a few videos, voice over the top, which is annoying because you don't get the sounds of the bike and that sort of thing. And now I'm gonna run a separate recorder so you can pick up the sounds of the bike for future videos. I'm gonna put a bit more effort into that. Okay. The next option we got after that, Insta360 X3. So I've got this to mount on the front of my bike, which is all good uh, to record 360 camera views. That's the main purpose of that. But I wanna test out its vlogging capability. So what I did is I went and bought the main bracket for it. which then gives you the feet, put it in single lens mode, and you can mount it on the front of the camera there. 
Now it's going to look completely messed up because you have to take that door off. This audio adapter goes on like so. And then the microphone plugs in through the top. Like that's just absolutely ridiculous. So we're going to have that cabling. Then we'll bring that up to the there. So you're going to have the, sort of like that in your face the whole time. Not ideal, but but the reason why I'm doing this is to test out the audio capabilities of the Insta360 because the audio chipset in this should be identical to the one that's in the new Ace Pro that's come out. Straight away, this already automatically goes to minus 18 gain. I only just got this bracket the other day, so I haven't tested it out in any way whatsoever. My knee's still recovering, so I haven't been on the bike, but that's the idea of these tests. Because if this works out to be the perfect setup, I'll go out tomorrow and buy that Ace Pro camera, not a problem. And then all the problems are solved. Yeah. Alrighty, I just had to stop recording there for a little bit because, let me move that away for a sec. Um, I got notification that the parcel I was waiting for since Wednesday um, had arrived at the post office. Well, a post office. Um, today's Friday, so I thought I'd better go pick it up so I can finish what I'm doing. And that is hush lav covers. So these are made by Garfield in America. Um, it says they're for Countryman, B3, B6, lovely microphones and Sanken ones, but they should fit what we've got going on here. Oh, hang on. Let's set the mood a little bit. There we go. If you're new to the channel, you'll um, learn this pretty quickly. Others already know this. I absolutely hate Australia Post. These were supposed to be here Wednesday, today's Friday, and they dropped them off at the post office that's 25 k's away. I have a post office that's 6 k's away that way, and a post office that's 7 k's away that way. Yet they continue to drop them off at one that's 25 k's away, since they refuse to deliver because they're friggin' lazy. All right, so the idea of these, which I'll zoom in down here and I'll grab a mic and show you. Okay, so the idea of these covers is so we're gonna replace the OEM little foam one with something a bit more dense. Now I was just reading on the front, don't know if you can see that there, genuine makeup sponge cylinders. So these will be the same as what you dip your makeup in and go to town with. Could have saved myself a lot of money if I actually read that before I bought them. Okay, so this hole is pretty small, but we'll force it in. Doesn't have to go all the way in, just has to cover the microphone bit. And there we go. The idea of me sticking these in the helmet to test them out, um, I'll probably just duct tape them in or something like that, but I do have this as well. So it's the closest I can get in Australia to Sugu or Su Glue or whatever you want to have it. It's very hard to get in Australia. Um, from looking at it though, this is nearly identical and you can get it, this is the black, but you can get it in white as well, and you can mix the two to make greys. So if I was gonna put it on the outside of my helmet, I'd probably do that. But given that it's the black, um, I'll just stick with that there. Obviously you need to put it in the helmet. Test, test. It's not peaking. Test, test, test. So I'm just looking at the little microphone on the back here. All I'm hoping is this gets rid of the wind noise. Otherwise, here's my options. A new helmet with this set up and test it out. A new helmet with um, probably the Insta360 Ace Pro or a new helmet with the GoPro 12, which I don't really want. So essentially this is a last ditch effort in trying to save the use of this camera essentially. 
Ah, <sighs> what to do, what to do? All right, we need to get testing. We need to test this out. It's just started raining, so I can't go for a ride. Well, I can go for a ride, but I'm not gonna. So let's for a second talk about my very first action cam that I got, this one here. So this is a Garmin Verb X. Yes, Garmin actually did make action cameras. Uh, this one's 1080. Um, after this, they made the XE, and then they made the, I think it was the Ultra 30. The Ultra 30 um, was 4K, uh, pretty good little camera actually. The reason why I'm a bit annoyed with all the new cameras that have come out, so we'll go with Hero 12, Insta360, the Ace Pro, um, the DJI Action 3, Action 4. The reason why I'm annoyed with them is because this has GPS already inbuilt in it. If you want GPS on any of the new cameras, you have to buy the optional accessory. But straight out of the packet with this, I can use um, telemetry um, and bring it all up on the screen for when I export videos. The downside of this camera is it doesn't have any external audio. So this is, like, this is 10 years old, still does HD. Another issue it has is I'll show you up, up close if it wants to focus. It has its own weird style of um, charging port, you need a special connector, so it's not USB in any way. But apart from that, it's actually not a bad little camera. What I would like taken out of this camera and put on any of the new cameras, you're wearing gloves, a push buttons, you know, it can be a bit difficult. This is a flick switch. Start recording, stop recording. Push the button if you want to take a photo. So I'll show you again up close. Let's put that on all the new cameras. If you had something with a flick switch, it's on or off. There's no holding buttons, pushing buttons, especially with gloves on, bloody difficult. But like, why wouldn't you just leave that? That's, that is the best way to start, stop, record for an action camera. I think if Garmin stayed in the game, they would have the best camera going around, I reckon. But it was just at the time where action cameras weren't starting to be profitable. Digital cameras like DSLRs and that sort of thing were just coming out and being very, very good. People were tending to go more that way. They couldn't understand what's the use of an action cam. Phones were getting a lot better. Everyone's like, oh, I'll just take my phone. Even today, like, I can't remember the last time I walked down the street and saw someone <laughs> like vlogging, walking down the street. If they're gonna be talking, they just got their phone out recording bam, off they go, and then bam, back in their pocket, everything's all discreet. If you're walking around with this, you've got really nowhere to put it, you, you've got to carry it. I think that's what turns people off so much about vlogging. It's like, it's still something bulky, it's in the way. But moto vlogging, attaches to your helmet, but yet, all these companies still put people that vlog like this ahead of moto vloggers, and people that are um, using these in the water. If you look up every single one of the new manufacturers, um, the specs on any of these new cameras, they have voice control. Great, but voice control is absolutely useless if you dunk this in water. You bring it back up, all the microphones are all filled with water. You say like, camera on or take, camera start recording. It's not gonna work, you can't hear. You gotta shake it out and hopefully it's gonna start working for you. There's just a few little things that they haven't thought about and they're not catering to the right people. So realistically, vloggers, just straight vloggers these days, are more than happy just to use their phone. Off you go. Stabilization in this is good enough. Audio recording is good enough. If not, put a Rode Wiles Go 2 on it, bam, like what I've got now. There you go, all sorted. They're not walking around like this anymore, extending them out. It's, yeah, mainly the people that do this are moto vloggers. They have these sorts of things. Then when they get to camp, you know, set it up, start recording the night sky, recording what you're doing around camp. Yeah, I just don't think, they're not, they're not thinking. So what I did with the Action 3 and with Insta360, I contacted them and Given that DJI has just released 
the audio adapter for the Action 4, I said, can you please supply me with um, YouTube links or anything for the people that you've given the cameras to for testing, like especially for motor vlogging? They're like, no. I'm like, okay then. Have you done any testing on this in a motor vlogging scenario? So like inside a helmet to test for wind noise and that sort of thing. They're like, nah, but we're pretty sure that the engineers are gonna be working on it. I've gone, well, are they working on it? Or you're pretty sure that they might be in the future? And then they just come out and said, oh, we don't know. Maybe, possibly, one day. I'm like, okay, great. Um, can you send me the adapter so I can test it on the Action 3? So then I just got the generic email back from them after that that said, thanks for your inquiry and support of our product, blah, blah, blah. We're really busy answering lots of emails and inquiries at the moment. If you don't hear back from us in five days, uh, consider that a no. Okay, hasn't been five days yet, but straight away from that, I can tell you that they're not gonna send me an adapter to test for this purpose, so I'll have to buy one. Now in Australia, those adapters are $80. That's why I'm a bit, uh, as to, do I lash out $80 on an adapter that's possibly gonna be no better than what I already have? Why should I go for the Action 4 and get that adapter when they can't tell me the differences between like the audio chips between the three and the four? And also they said there may one day be an audio um, firmware update for the three. I said, is that guaranteed? They're like, oh, we don't know. I said, well, why even suggest it? Or I'm really, this is, I'm putting all my hope into this camera at the moment, not so much as a 360 camera, but to test it out in this vlogging capability with this adapter. Because if this audio is spot on out of this camera, it's pretty much gonna be spot on out of the Ace Pro. So the marketing and sales teams and even some of the technical teams that I've talked of, they just don't care. They just could not be bothered in finding out any information. Like we've released a product, just buy it and test it for yourself. And that's essentially what I've done with all these products here. I have bought them and have tested for themselves. And yeah, here we are, still testing. And of course, the other option is to do what everybody does, get a GoPro and constantly sook about it overheating. So I really have to work out what do I want when I'm vlogging or what can I live with when I'm vlogging. I can live with really good video and crap audio because I can dub over the top. It's not the most ideal thing. Or I can run a secondary recording device. So like the Action 3 um, with this wireless go setup works absolutely perfect. But in the real world, it's a nightmare because you have to turn the camera on, turn this mic on, turn the receiver on, and then turn it all off when you're finished. So you pull over, turn it off, otherwise the batteries go flat too quick. The perfect mode of logging setup is have all your microphones set up in your helmet, push the quick release button on whatever camera you've got and it's doing what you need to, push the button again or even voice or even tell it through the voice command, camera on, camera off, record, stop. That is the perfect setup. These cameras are capable of doing the voice side of things if the audio through the mic is good. That's what we're gonna find out. All right, so first thing, what are we gonna test? I think what we should do first is I'll put this on. We'll take it for a little bit of a run. I'll talk through it. Obviously, it's just gonna have the audio that's inbuilt in this. I'll keep this whole video in 4K, so this is gonna be upscaled to 4K, so it's gonna look a little bit grainy. Or actually, I might even just keep it 1080 inside the screen and we'll see. Just to show you how far we've come in like 10 plus years. And I'll even bring up a little bit of the telemetry on this so to show that it does have inbuilt GPS. And then after that, what we'll do, put the GoPro on with the GoPro receiver, TRS microphone, which is this one. So TRS microphone with the original um, phone cover 
and then I'll change the phone cover out for the hush cover. So after we do the GoPro, I'll do the Action 3 with the Boyer connector and TRS microphone first, and then obviously with the hush on and off, and then I'll change it to the TRS microphone uh, with the Google Pixel connector, same deal, and then I'll change it to the A Logic connector, and hopefully out of all this, we will find something that works, and then we'll throw all the eggs in one basket and put everything on the line and test it out with the Insta360 X3 and hope that this solves all of our problems. If it doesn't solve all our problems, I'm up for a new helmet. That's the only thing I can think of, just to stop the air getting through. Because no one that I've seen on YouTube has this much problem with filming and recording. Yeah. All right, I'll put the first thing together and we'll take it for a spin. Most likely gonna be in the next video, but we will see. And hopefully we can turn our mood from this to this. Huh. Is green better than blue? Maybe we can even turn it to that. Yeah. I suppose if we take Star Wars into consideration, blue or green's purely acceptable, isn't it? Yeah rather than, uh. All right, first things first. I need to find some duct tape or something super sticky because I'm just gonna stick the mics in the bottom of the helmet first before we get too crazy with that glue. Yeah, actually I wonder if blue tack will work. Yeah, we'll give it a go.